Hey everyone, the semiconductor industry has been booming in recent months and applied materials stock is one that's rode that tailwind higher. So in this video, I'm going to evaluate applied materials stock, look at its revenue, cash flow, profitability, and valuation, and determine if it's too late to buy applied materials stock or if it is indeed a good time to buy applied materials. So let's jump in. Let's take a look at this semiconductor stock. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. All right, I highlighted that applied material stock price has been on a nice run and you can see it's jumped in recent years from around $100 per share in 2023 all the way up to $186 per share as of this recording. If you look back longer term, it's jumped from around $50 per share in 2019 up to $186 in the current trading day. So it has a nice run. Is there more room to go? That's what we're going to look at in this video. So part of the reason applied material stock has done so well is because of its excellent business prospects, revenue, cash flow, profitability have all increased very nicely for applied materials. And you can see here, revenue in the trailing 12 month has jumped to 26.52 billion. That was up from less than 8 billion in 2015. Now it is a cyclical company, just like the semiconductor industry is cyclical. Applied materials is no different. The current trend is a rebound in semiconductor stocks. One of the reasons why 2024, 25, and 26 is shaping to be really good years for the semiconductor industry is because of the replacement cycle in personal computers, for one, and consumer electronics, for second. First, let's start with personal computers. Remember in 2020 and 2021, when people used to have just one computer in every household? Well, was that viable in 2020 and 2021? No, right? Everyone in the house started working, learning, using the computer all day long. And so you needed more computers from one per house to one per person that created a boom in sales for personal computers in 2020 and in 2021. Well, computers are long lasting goods. They get replaced on average between four and six years, according to Intel CEO and Intel management. So if you're keeping your computer from four to six years, if you bought a computer in 2020 and 2021, you're probably not going to buy another one until 2024 or 2025. Well, here we are in 2024 and it's time for those computers that were purchased in 2020 to start being replaced. Now, this is just the early stage of that four to six year window. It's going to go through between 24 and 26. So it's just getting started. And in fact, that's reflected in applied materials prospects where revenue hasn't begun to jump just yet. Now, revenue is expected to start growing in 2025 for applied materials. And I'll show you that when we look at its prospects for the next two years. So 2024 is expected to be another cyclically down year for applied materials. Still, even though the company's been in a downtrend in terms of cyclicality for semiconductor chips, it's actually done well, relatively speaking, operating profit margin still at 28.86% despite this downturn here. It started from a relatively high point, near 40% operating profit margin. So when you're working from a higher rate, even when you come back down, you're still at a nice level. And given that it's expected to stabilize here in 2024 and return to increases in growth in 2025, it's reasonable to assume this operating profit margin will go back above 30% starting maybe late 2024. Let me show you its prospects for the next few years. So here I have its revenue and earnings per share growth rates expected for 2024, 2025, and 2026. This top figure here is its revenue growth estimate. And I mentioned that 2024 is going to be another difficult year for applied materials. Revenue is expected to decrease by 1.4%. Similarly, earnings per share are expected to decrease by 3.9% in 2024, for which applied materials fiscal year 2024 ends on October 2024, not December. Its fiscal year is different from the calendar year. Yes, companies are allowed to do that. 
For its fiscal year 2025, which ends in October again, revenue is expected to grow by double digits, 10%, and earnings per share is expected to jump by nearly 17%. So that's the cyclical rebound that I was discussing earlier. Similarly, for 2026, 9.3% revenue growth expected with 16% growth in earnings per share expected. So while 2024 will be challenging, 25 and 26, because of that replacement cycle, because of the cyclical rebound, are expected to be much better years for applied materials. Now, we already looked at its operating profit margin and how solid it was. 2024 will likely bring this down a little bit more or stay relatively flat here at 29%. And then starting 2025 or late 2024, you'll start to see the profitability rebound if it does indeed deliver those growth rates in revenue and profitability. Similarly, its cash flow from operations to sales has been very solid. 32.81% in the most recent trailing 12-month period. If it does continue this level of growth that is expected in 25 and 26, its cash flow from operations from sales could stay at relatively high levels, although I do expect this to come back down a bit in 2024 to closer in the 20% range, 25% range, and then recover again in 25 and 26. Still, these levels of cash flow from operations to sales are excellent numbers. Uh, this means that the company is turning $32 out of every $100 of sales into cash flow. That's a good metric. That's what you want to see from businesses. You want to see them take sales and turn it into cash flow. You don't want to see empty calories. You don't want to see sales that lead to losses on the bottom line and sales that lead to cash leaving the company, right? That's not really attractive. This is what investors should be looking for. Companies that generate strong profitability, strong cash flow from operations. Unless, of course, if they're negative, but they're moving in the right direction. That's okay as well. But if they're positive and moving in the right direction, like applied materials, that's a double benefit for investors. The next thing I wanted to evaluate was its balance sheet. And looking at its cash and short-term investments of $6.869 billion compared to its long-term debt of $5.5 billion, Applied Materials has a relatively solid balance sheet. It can choose to pay off all its long-term debt and it'll still have roughly $1.3 billion in cash on hand. This is not what I call a fortress of a balance sheet or a pristine balance sheet where some companies have like 20 billion in cash and like 2 billion in debt and that cash to debt ratio is very strong. It's not at that level, but it's also not at the level where it's risky where they have 1 billion in cash and 10 billion in debt, right? So it's not risky. It's not excellent. It's just solid, average, good, you know, more cash than debt. I like to see that. The more cash, the better, of course, when you're evaluating this metric. But also, investors don't like to see too much cash on a company's balance sheet because they want to see a company putting the cash to use. So in one sense, having a ratio like this where your cash is only slightly above your debt and you don't have too much cash sitting around not working, that's desired for investors. You want to see companies putting cash to work and that's what we see here. And finally, I wanted to look at valuation and I chose to use the forward price to sales ratio. And according to this metric, applied material stock is the most expensive it's been going back to 2021. It's trading at a forward price to earnings of 20.71. It was briefly around this level in the start of 2022. But for the most part, the stock has been cheaper than this price. So you're paying an absolute premium price for applied materials right now, according to its own past of the last three years. And given that 2024 is expected to be a challenging year with revenue declining and profitability declining and paying a premium price, I would say is undesired at this point. So if you're looking at applied materials stock and trying to buy this stock, I would put applied materials on your watch list and wait for a dip in the price to buy. So I would put applied materials, I would rank it like a hold and I would wait for a drop in the stock price to get in and buy at a better valuation. I would be looking for at least a 10% dip in the stock price 
before I would get into applied materials stock right now. Before I let you go, let me tell you about the greatest deal on YouTube. With just a click of a button, you can get free financial analysis from a professor with decades of investing experience. So what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button and I'll see you again soon.